Hey everybody, today I've got a special guest commentator on Logan on Books. It's my good friend Allison Parker, straight in Hello. from Tallahassee, Florida. Thank you. She's going to be helping me out today. We read a book together, so let's get to it. Hi, Allison. Hi. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome Thanks to the for podcast. having me. She's had read many more books than I have, so she's going to be more insightful than I am. <laughs> I don't think that's true. And she's going to have more to say. But today, we uh, this week, we read The Three Imposters by Arthur Macon, and she's going to talk about it for you. Go for it. Well, this is a series of vignettes, I think I can call it vignettes, right, that are layered within an overarching story or stories, which are then housed in a framing device story, too. And the story builds and builds, but you don't really know it until you're kind of in the penultimate scene of the book. Yeah, let's back up a little bit. Arthur Macon is a um, weird fiction writer. Along, the, He was inspirational to H.P. Lovecraft, and he was kind of among that crowd. He was an occultist. He was a member of the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn. He wrote a lot of stories about fairies and pagan gods and things like that. Uh, so this is a horror story. It's, it's basically a novella, but it consists of uh, nested stories, kind of like the, the Arabian Nights you get these stories within a story, and you have these different narrators talking about different things. Yeah, that's a really good way to put it, nesting stories. Should we talk about the stories one by one? Well, we don't want to put any spoilers, spoilers but we can talk about it a little bit. I yeah. hate spoilers. Let's not spoil it for the readers, because the readers are going to read these books. Okay, well, let's talk about how they can get a copy of this book. Was the book scary? I found certain parts of it eerie or creepy. I didn't find it scary. It's not something I would have had a problem reading, yeah. being alone in my house at night when it's dark and stormy. It, it's not that kind of book. Okay. But it does have a spine-tingling sensation. It's, it's more atmospheric than, than anything, I would think. There are passages that do leave you with a sense of building dread. Right. Well, in terms of how people can get a copy of it, uh, I think it's public domain, isn't it? You it were is. able to read it on Project I, Gutenberg. I did read it on the the on the public domain. I know it's also available in paperback from Dover Publications. The version I have here is from Call of Cthulhu Fiction because it's kind of everything related to the Cthulhu mythos or inspirational to that. And this one collects not only the three imposters but some other stories by Macon, including the Great God Pan, which is a really famous great uh, horror story by him about pagan gods. I recommend that one. Right, and support your local bookstore. Can I say that? No. You um, have questions about the story. You I said. do, I do. There were times when I was reading this book that I wasn't really sure what was happening. And we didn't talk about this at all before this just is now. I mean, we talked about it a little bit, but in terms of. <laughs> in, in terms of plot, the way that it's narrated at times, it seems like there's a filter between the audience and the speaker, the narrator. What do you mean a filter? Um, a disconnect. How so? Uh, you feel very removed from the action at times, and so you don't always know what's actually transpired and what you just think is transpired. So I found myself rereading certain passages over and over, I mean a couple of times or three times maybe, just to see if that's what I really right. thought happened. What do you think of the novel of the white powder? This is a section of the three imposters that is often excerpted for anthologies because it's considered to be uh, one of the best parts of the novel. Uh, well, I was really glad that it wasn't about what I thought it was about on the, the title. What do you think it was about? Um, this isn't monetized, right? No. Okay, I thought no it was... No one would pay for this. <laughs> I would pay for this. No, it's terrible. Um, I thought it was cocaine, you know, white powder or BC powder. All right, we're going to censor that. <laughs> you I told me to you say it. You can't say cocaine on the podcast. Well, you knew that's what I was going to say. No. I thought that the white powder referenced some kind of illegal, illegal narcotic or controlled substance. Well, it wasn't exactly illegal, I suppose. And it definitely wasn't a controlled substance. It wasn't controlled. It was an out-of-control substance. It was so out of control. But I, I don't know if it was better or worse than cocaine. Um, well, let's leave that up to the viewers yeah. to make up their mind mm. on that. Um, towards the end, when you find out, found out what was happening, 
Um, it had a pretty decent punch. Yeah. But it wasn't twist. What, what a I, twist. What a twist. It wasn't. In that shallow eat your heart out. Uh, it wasn't. It didn't go down the way I thought. I thought it would. Yeah. I like this book because I think it's different than most other books I've read. I don't know very many that use this kind of structure. I can't think of any, I mean, certainly vignettes that have an overarching yeah. theme. Like you see framing devices for short stories, but the way that it ties together and is actually part of the stories that it, it tells, yeah. I think is very unique. I think Arabian Nights is the only thing that's like that. Or um, maybe if there was like an omnibus Tales from the Dark Side movie. Oh, okay. Tales from the Crypt. Tales from the Crypt. Either one. I don't different. know what Tales from the Dark Side is. Uh, it's, it's a similar, very 80s, schlocky, campy horror anthology vignette show. Okay. Don't let the age of this book you know, deter you. I think it's 1895 or 1896, so yeah. that puts it at 120-something years old. That makes it one of the newer books I've reviewed on this channel. <laughs> it actually does. Yeah, I, I don't read new books. I review old books. Well, I brought you a couple of brand new books, so that will force your hand and coerce you to review them for the show. Okay. Anything else? No. Okay, that's it. Done. Arthur Macon, though. Awesome writer. I love his stuff. It's very kind of Victorian, you know. If you like Victorian-style writing, you'll enjoy it. And who doesn't? Who doesn't like Victorian? <laughs> also, he was Welsh, guys. I love the Welsh. You don't have How many Welsh writers do you have in your collection? Not many. So I'll be back next weekend. More reviews, as always. Please subscribe to my channel. Subscribe to Allison's podcast, filmbullybays.com. <laughs> called Pop Culture Potluck. Popculturepotluck.com, <laughs> .net, .org. And uh, we'll be back next time. Not Allison. She won't be back ever. She's gone. Ever? This, this was a disaster. I can never come She's back. She's not allowed back on. No more. But apart from that, I'll be back next week. Have a good one. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Bye-bye.